I'm Chad. I'm Dad. No, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be Dad first. Oh, yeah. You're Dad. I'm Dad. I'm Chad. And this is our channel. Hey, guys. This is Chad from Chad and Dad. Um, Dad had to take off, uh, take my mom somewhere. But we were working on the plane today. Um, it is October 10th. And this is just an update video, and I had some questions I wanted to ask you guys. If you guys could help us out. Um, so we're starting on the wiring, and um, got the wiring back from Pacific Coast and laid it all back in. Everything is like 99%. We're missing a couple of things, um, but they are sing sending that to us. They uh, Sean up there actually pinned everything out. We had a, a couple of wires that were missing, and he's mailing that. I'll just be able to plug it into the VPX and run the wiring back to where it needs to go. Um, I've been attaching and soldering all the wires for the headsets and we have the general aviation headsets which take two plugs. Um, you have a mic and you have an audio for each headset and then the Bose it's just one plug. And you can buy these guys that will adapt There'll be two that go into here and then it'll turn into this female Bose plug. But the holes are already in the center console of the RANS, in the RANS package. So we just, we opted to go ahead and fill it out the way it needed to be. Dad has um, David Clark uh, headphones and I haven't bought any yet, but I thought I might buy the Bose. And that way anyway, we can use either and we don't have to adapt it. And, like I said, the holes are already there. So one tip is we wanted to have a cigarette style 12 volt outlet and we wanted to have USB in the center console um, to charge you know, cell phones or iPads, whatever. This, these holes are both 7 eighths of an inch and that will fit a standard plug for a cigarette lighter, 12 volt cigarette lighter. However, it will not fit the USB outlet. This is about an inch and an eighth. So we didn't know that until after we had this covered. And I measured it out. We were gonna put another 12 volt. My phone will not show up. Um, we were gonna put another 12 volt cigarette lighter here just because we'd already covered it and I was worried about cutting this hole out, but Dad tonight was like, let's just do it. So I have an old Rambo bit and this is what I used on the firewall and it's just garbage. So we started with that guy and it was tearing up the metal, chunked it. Um, and I went to Home Depot and bought this Milwaukee, 60 bucks for this guy. So do this before you cover it, but this hole needs to be an inch and an eighth. And that is exactly what this is, okay? Um, this, if you want anything any bigger, I found inch and eighth is usually the biggest Lowe's or Home Depot carries. So if you want something bigger, you'll have to get on Amazon or eBay. But don't buy the cheapest one they have like I did because it's garbage. Um, so once you do that, um, I went ahead and just get you, and this X-Acto knife is priceless when it comes to this, but this allows you just to go around the edge and follow that edge to make it perfect. You'll want it to do an X and then kind of hold the piece up and cut it short. Don't try to pull it and cut it. Um, cut it short and then go back and slowly follow the metal to make your circle. Because if you pull it up and try to cut it, you will cut it short. I did that on one of these, but luckily the shoulder was big enough to cover it. So this is how it fits, faces forward. This guy will slide, it's a very tight fit, but it slides in and locks down. There you go. So from the inside, I'm so excited because this was a big deal. Okay. 
So I bought some, and I don't know how to say this, maybe you guys, well you can't say it because you have to type it, but Douche Fasteners, D-E-U-T-S-C-H. I bought some of those guys, and they take a special um, tool to terminate or to uh, actually crimp the barrel connector. I like the barrel style connectors. They're so much easier to use. You basically take this guy and I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but this is important. So Josh at Pro Project Two Arrow um, told me to get these and I think he put it in one of his latest video. There's a kit um, and it's pretty expensive. It's iWIS and it comes with different sizes. Um, these crimp the guys that fold over. I don't like those as much as the barrel because they do take a little bit of practice and these, these barrel style, they drop. Once you get this thing set, um, this screws to allow you to, so that guy's flush in there, that's where you want it. You can screw it in or out and it will set the, the, the depth. This guy will set um, how, how hard it crimps, how much of the tool goes into the, to the work material. So then now you would just slide your wire into that and crimp and notice how it locks. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but four little pieces of metal come out and crimp that guy four places. And then once you get, it won't release it until you crimp it all the way. See how it locks, lock, 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 won't release and you get to crimp all the way and it releases. And you wanna have just a little bit, say about an eighth of an inch or 16th, about a 16th of an inch of wire. You don't want the, um, you don't want the, the, this part of the wire going in, the, the sheath going in here. You wanna have a little bit of it sticking out so it's, it can move a little bit. And then there's a witness hole here so you can make sure it's bottomed out. So cut it, um, or um, strip it, slide it in, make sure you see it in the witness hole. I had to get a uh, magnifying glass. And then once it bottoms out, measure how much you need to cut. Leave about a 16th of, of uh, copper sticking out here. Cut it, put it into the uh, tool, and like I showed you earlier, crimp down, give it a good couple of tugs. And then once you're done, once you get all these guys where you uh, crimped on, you will slide these into this um, housing and then you take one of these little orange guys right here and that locks everything in. So if you wanted to take it apart, you could pop this guy out and then there's a little tab you could push back and slide these guys out. So um, anyway, those are really neat fasteners and they're watertight. So, there we are on that. Um, I will get back to that later, but that's how it's gonna end up. So now we have a USB plug and a regular cigarette lighter plug. I wish that had a top to it. I'm sure we can get some kind of a stopper or something. I just don't want uh, crap to fall in there. So there's the finished product, guys. Pretty cool. And it turned out really nice on the inside. So come over here. And I wanted to show you the pass-through. So this is a firewall pass-through. I wanted to do a mil-spec um, bulkhead connector, but because of this frame in the, being in the way, there was really no place to put it. Um, and if I tried to move it over, I would have hit that. So there really wasn't a good place to put it. I guess we could have moved it over here, but then you would have, I don't know. We went ahead and just went with this guy. This is what you see on a lot of planes. Um, Josh at Project Two Arrow used a um, bulkhead connector and they've actually, the new kits, they've moved this up here to where you can use a bulkhead connector. It's out of the way, but I couldn't do that here because of this embossment here. So that's actually concaved 
and not flat, so I couldn't move this up. So what you want to buy, this took me a bit, but Tony over at Rand's pointed me in the right direction. He's an awesome guy to talk to if anybody needs any help. Um, but this is a kit, and I believe it, we got this from Aircraft Spruce. And it, it doesn't fit just, it fits just right. The, the CNC cut that they made isn't exact, so I don't know what they were using for measurements, but it does work. So it covers everything. I'm talking about these holes right here. They're not exact, but because the bolts are a little smaller, they work. And I believe those are number eights or number tens. Um, regular washer and then a lock nut. So then this stuff will go over it and then you'll want to use this adhesive. It's a fire back uh, blocker. And then once that adhesive is around there, it, you'll tighten it all down. Um, and again, I haven't really read the instructions, but I believe this wraps around the wire and goes inside. And then this goes around it and the hose clamps hold it. Um, and I believe we have all of our wire coming through. These guys are um, the counters for the ECUs. They count the magnets and the flywheel to let it know when to fire the spark. So you're not supposed to cut these. And that was another reason I didn't do a bulkhead connector is because these you're not supposed to cut. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these connectors off here and desolder these guys. I believe there's three wires. It's either two or three wires. And I'm gonna drill a hole here and put a grommet and run these through that hole because these are too big to go through a grommet. So I'm gonna run it through here and then I'm gonna run it through here. That way it's nice and neat. I think I've seen it to where people have cut a slit right here to slide it through here, but I'm going to desolder it or unsolder it, however you say it, and then resolder. I bought some clear heat shrink and that's what the manufacturer used um, to resolder once I'm done. So I'll do those one wire at a time, I'll run them through, or one, uh, excuse me, one, uh, whatever those are called at a time and run them back through. That way I have a reference of where they go, take a lot of pictures. That's what I did here. Um, if I hadn't taken a picture every time I unplugged something, I never would have got all that back. We had to send that back, well, not this, but we had to send the harness back to Pacific Coast um, to shorten some wires and add some things and whatnot. But I think this turned out really good in here. Um, this is a grounding block and I isolated it to keep it from ground looping. But I, these aren't the right size, so I ordered some more. Um, don't want to show you guys too much because I think I got an, a video with that. Here's a question that I had, and I'll end the video here. But I mounted the ELT, and one of these little ADO clamps isn't the right size, so it's got a little wiggle to it. But I'll take it apart. So the ELT shows facing forward here. And my question is, I'll show you how I mount it. My question is, is that okay that it's in an angle? Um, or does it need to be, you know, parallel with the plane exactly? I've got it just at a slight angle, probably 10, 15 degrees. Um, so this guy comes out. Basically what I did is I put an edel clamp here and an edel clamp here around this piece of tubing and then I used an edel clamp here and I just made, I took a piece of aluminum and I dent it kind of like what Rands did in the, in the uh, kit over here. They did the same thing with this guy. I haven't mounted it yet, but it mounts here and then it mounts to the servo plate. But I copied their idea there and that gave it another mounting point basically to keep it from rotating on that because there's only one piece of tubing so it had a tendency to rotate so that keeps it from rotating the tubing is where all the strength is um, again like I said that just keeps it from rotating but it's very solid it moves a little bit because this this edel clamp is the wrong size I need to order the right size but guys weigh in on that and let me know if that's okay um, and yes it does clear this guy 
that's going to be the flaps so it clears that not the flaps the um, ailerons so yeah there you go guys just uh, weigh in on that there's a shot of the panel again I think it looks really awesome with that second screen there but anyway um, get this video up for you guys hopefully tonight maybe tomorrow and uh, see what you guys think thanks Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of Dad and Chad. If you like this video, share it with your friends and give us a thumbs up. And never miss an episode of Dad and Chad by hitting that subscribe button. Because we'll be back next Tuesday with another episode. Thanks again for watching Dad and Chad.